With almost 20 years experience now in web design, what are the things that I wish I knew then that I really feel like you need to be thinking about now? Because if I knew these things when I first started, I would have cut out a ton of mistake, a ton of grief, a ton of heartache, upset nights, sleepless nights, loads of tears all over your keyboard, short circuiting the buttons and the mouse and all of that. What did I wish I knew? The first one is believe in yourself. I don't just mean imposter syndrome. I mean, believe in yourself, your voice, your tone, how you portray yourself, how you come across, how you speak to clients, how you give them a quote or a proposal. Ditch the I think we could do. Maybe I'm not sure. I have to check that out. Be honest. If you're asked to do anything and you're not sure what how to do it, say, I don't know how to do that. I can look into it, but there may be an increase in cost for me to spend time doing that. Or how about we do X, Y, Z? Steer them towards something that you know you can do. But believe in yourself because very early on, when you're working with some clients or some people, they always want to haggle you down. They want to get the best for the cheapest price possible. They want to kind of be in control of the project. And if you show any vulnerability They seize on that, okay? So believe in yourself. Number two, do not underprice for fear of missing out. How many times when we started and like you got your first client and you had a reasonable price and you got excited, your second client, and now you might increase the price a little bit or tinker around the edges. And the client goes, nope, I can get it done miles cheaper than that on some other platform. You need to match that price. And you're literally haggling your way down towards the bottom or towards a price because you haven't had a project in say two or three weeks and you're like, well, yeah, you know, I could do with the money. Why? Why was I even doing that? And this is, I'm talking about from experience here. I had a full time job. I was being paid very well. I had a house. I had a car. I was happy. I had food on the table. Why was I like allowing my prices to come down? And that's what I was doing. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago, okay? We're talking about the world of coding, which was painful for me. But that's the world I was in then. So believe in yourself and your prices, okay? If you've set a baseline price, Unless the person has got an amazing offer for you that you know is real and it's going to work out lucratively, stop lowering your prices. You might be able to knock a little bit around the edges, but don't halve it just because they've said they want you to halve it. Because the minute you do that, they know they've got you. And every time there's a future proposal with them or a bit of extra work, they're going to keep bringing you down. And two years down the line, when your prices are now 10 times what they were two years prior, you're still going to be stuck in a rut because you, you you basically created a rod for your back. You're stuck there. So don't do that. Number three is letting the client control the project. Yes, they also have to define the spec and you've got to work with them and they might have particular designs or images they want to use and you're going to argue a little bit about what's good for UI and UX and all of that. And they're going to go, well, I don't care. This is what I want. Do not let them control the project. If they say they want it done in four days and you think it's an eight day project, they can pay more because you're now putting in more time and effort to get it done. If you've said it's going to be an eight day project and that's how you've costed it up, but they want to take two months before you finish off because they're busy, they can't sign off, they're on holiday, they're out and about, you, you can't communicate with them because they're unavailable or there's always that little bit oh yeah that's great but can we do this as well oh yeah that I I know that hero banner was signed off on the homepage all of that a week ago but can we do xyz because I went on to another website they've got this button can we do that within the price you priced up for eight days work to do xyz Stay in control of that because when you let them define what they want and how they want it midway through the project, it never ends and you end up doing a heck of a lot more for free for them. And that's not fair. Number four is make sure you got a contract in place. Many times in the old days, yeah, yeah, you want a website done. There's an email exchange. There was a WhatsApp, not WhatsApp back then. Then it was just like text messages. And you agree something in principle. You start working and either they decide not to pay up 
Will they decide to delay payment or the pricing negotiations go all over the place or the spec goes out the window? Where was your agreement of what you said you would do for them? Where is it? Probably in the bin somewhere. Maybe it's not even in the bin because you didn't even have an agreement. Get an agreement in place, okay, to protect you and them and, and portray it like that. Say to them, I'm doing this to protect you so that we, you know what you're getting out of it. Don't say, hey, it's to make sure I don't get lumbered with anything I don't want to do. No, reword it to be to protect them because in a way it is to protect them as well as much as it is to protect you. Number five is starting without payment. And I've I've been guilty of this a long time ago. You got a client, you got a good relationship with them, the spec is all cleared out, you have a very good understanding of what they do, you've decided on the pricing, 50% up front, 50% at the end, but then the client goes, look, I'm really, really struggling for money here, I'm really, really struggling, can you please just do me a favour, can you start the project and I promise I'll get you to deposit next week or whatever. And out of good faith, you go for it. But the deposit never arrives and you'll keep asking for it and the project has now got a little bit longer with a few tweaks here and there. Um, don't forget the deposit, please. And, and by the way, we're almost apologetic, aren't we? Oh, please don't forget the, the deposit. Oh, yeah. Can you please make sure you pay that? Oh, yeah. Here's a reminder. What the heck? We, we're being apologetic for something that they should be have paid up at the start. You know, don't forget. What? Of course. I mean, I don't think they've forgotten. I think they know they were meant to pay it, but they're not paying it. And you are then in a really weird situation with, um, is the website built on your hard drive? Well, you could say, right, forget it. You're not getting it. But then you might have spent a week on it. What if you're in a worse situation where the client gave you access to their hosting or their WordPress? You know, they set up admin rights and you might go, well, OK, I'm going to delete the website. Be careful of that because you enter a world of legal anguish, OK, because they could come after you with a lawyer and, you know, then it gets very, very tricky. So what do you do in that situation? And, and to be honest, even if you were to get rid of the website or not let them have access to it, for all you know, if they're sat on a host and that host takes daily backup, they could easily go to their host and go, can I have a backup from two days ago? Yeah, here you go. Boom. And away they go with the website. Make sure you get that deposit. Make sure you have ensured that you have defined the milestones of payment. OK, when are you going to get paid and when should they pay? And don't do any more work until they get paid. If my clients do not pay a deposit, I don't care how much they want to work with me and how much we've defined what the spec is. You're not getting paid. If you want to talk with me and we want to have a consultation, I want payment prior to that. If you want me to investigate your page speed or just have a look at your website in detail, I want payment prior to it. I'm not going to do work for you because you could quite easily take my advice or whatever or any work we've done and run away. And I don't want the headache of going... Where's the money coming from? And number six is actually one that doesn't just relate to the clients, but it relates to you, your business, everything you do. It even relates to your office. It even relates to your chair, the food you eat, the people you speak to. It relates to everything. Stop wasting time on ideas and do action. All right. Stop sitting there going, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a new mouse. Oh, I'm going to get a new uh, stereo system. I'm a new microphone. Oh, I might design this website. Yeah, I might do my LinkedIn profile. I might join this forum. I might network. A little. I might. I might, 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 might. Forget the might. OK, these are ideas. All right. We all have ideas, but we know that some ideas are never going to happen. I, I, I would love a swimming pool in my back garden. It's an idea. You know, I could go away and research it, but it ain't going to happen. Not in my lifetime anyway. We all have ideas, but there are some things we can do something about. So let's just say I wanted to go and buy a new computer system. And some of you on the other side are now going to go, yeah, it's an idea. And I know you're saying you could do it, but I can't afford it right now. You can still put action into it. You can still save up to get it right. You can make it happen. You can set a trajectory right in three months time. I'm going to get this the same for you as a web designer, as a freelancer, as an agency, as a person, as a company, as a team. Sort out your website, sort out your social media marketing, sort out where you want to be, sort out your proposals, your quotes, whatever you're doing. Stop 
waiting and get on with it. For 20 years, nearly 20 years, I've been working in web design. We did not formalize and start really hitting home with our web designs and clients and just building up our base until about six years ago. Up until that point, it was more of a side hustle and a lot of us are guilty of that, right? So if you wanna be serious about making a dent in this world, and I don't just mean web design, I'm talking about any business out there, believe in yourself. Don't underprice. Don't let the client control the project. Make sure you sign off agreements. Make sure you get that goddamn deposit at the start and get paid and stop wasting time on ideas. Do action now, like smashing the like button on this video. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.